Peanuts, if you missed it, I just said I'm also on my period right now. So that's the energy we're bringing into this conversation. I am your host, Kelsey Darrow. Welcome to Confidently Insecure, the podcast where we're absolutely sure we don't know everything. And this is going to be such a fun one because my friends are here. I love it when it's a friendship gang gang. Just an excuse to hang and chill and talk with my pals. Our first guest, you know her. She is a friend of the pod. She's an advocate and an author, subject of my next documentary, you guys, and a somatic coach, and her friend, who is now my friend, who is a queer sex education and science, sex science leader, leader, a sex science leader? That makes you sound <laughs> yeah, like the head of the sex science. We're going to do that. Uh, we have Marley Liss and Eva Bloom, you guys. Hi, friends. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I am so excited to have you guys. You guys are both Toronto based where I was just visiting. I got to hang out with you. Eva, you took us to a drag brunch, which was so fun. And I feel like when you meet your people and especially because you're like a, one of my least people, you just instantly know, like when you connect, you're just like, oh, hi, I'm going to be friends with this person forever. Huh. Yes, it was like welcome <laughs> to this beautiful queer bookshop. I think we were both like, this is this is my favorite place to be in the world. <laughs> exactly. Um, and your guys' friendship is so cute. And the reason why we are here to talk today is to talk about what you guys have created out of that lovely, gorgeous queer friendship, which is that you're both founders of the Fuck Comp Het Support Club. Yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, well, for anyone who's like old or out of touch, break down what exactly those words are and what this club means. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I can I can start with the thing. Um sure. Yeah. I mean, it, no judgment if you don't know what this means. Part of why we created this is because it took us way too long in life to figure out what this means. So comp head mm -hmm. is short for compulsory heterosexuality. If you're like a Gen Zer or millennial on TikTok, you might have heard that a lot because it's been gaining a lot of traction in the past few years. But it's actually like a term, I think, that was pulled from Adrian Rich's essay called Am I a Lesbian, which came out in the 80s. And it's basically like a very fancy form of an am I gay quiz that we definitely <laughs> all used to do on BuzzFeed. So <laughs> <laughs> Compet is basically just like this idea or theory or a thing that we've definitely probably all experienced where the worlds and culture just really expects us to be straight and kind of mm. makes the default assumption that like if you're a female assigned at birth, then you're going to love men and marry a man. And like, that is your destiny. And so comp head is everything that feeds into that kind of default assumption. Got it. And how did this curb come to be? Yeah. So it came to be when Mar Marley and I met, Marley invited me to be on her podcast and she mentioned some like witchy things and that she'd recently moved to Toronto. And I was like, Maybe I need some <laughs> queer friends to do witchy things within Toronto. Yes. And we met up once and, like, the shared experience that we have of both being lesbians who had initially come out as bi around the same time in 2018 and kind of had gone on this internal journey over the pandemic, over TikTok, and really being baby gays again and coming out as lesbians. We're like, we need community. Finding each other was so huge we need more people i will also say i don't know about editing and stuff but i think the 1980 essay is called compulsory heterosexuality and the lesbian yes, existence is. which is different <laughs> from the to very tiktok famous am i a lesbian like master doc which did some excellent science communication and being like have you heard of compet and we were all like we should, have, we should have earlier than this moment. Wait, I love that, like, both of those essays are so, like, masterfully different title, but it sounds, like, equally as important. Like, I do sometimes need the explain like I'm five or the four dummies version of, like, ways to explain something because, I guess, because we're blaming it on comp het. We're blaming it on the fact that even our Canadian pals, our, our sisters and, and brothers and others up north are raised in a similar society. We're raised in patriarchy. We're raised in comp head. It's, it's a, 
it's global. It's not just a Toronto issue or a Los Angeles issue. And I love that your guys' friendship was like, you're witchy and gay. It's like, find me one that isn't. Like, why do we all love witchy and like, we all need community? Like, what is it about community that's so important to both of you? Mm. I don't No, I've, like, talked about this before and, like, to Marley, too, that I, the first time I really sat down and had conversations with friends who were late in life becoming out lesbians, it felt kind of like I didn't realize that I had been in a desert this whole time and, like, getting my first glass of water and being like, (laughs) ah, like, I can breathe again, this thing that I've been, like, trying to get and not get yeah just feeling that like belonging and and feeling like validated and affirmed Mm -hmm. and yeah Mm -hmm. because it's a it's a wild journey to have everything you think you've known flipped upside down a little bit yeah how about you marley i feel that a lot and like that is such a powerful description eva like especially re-coming out during the pandemic. It's such an isolating time during an already potentially isolating experience of just like being so in your head and navigating a lot of shame, which was definitely true for me. And I think just very simply like meeting people with shared experiences, the power of solidarity Mm. being like, oh, I do. I think it's just a feeling of belonging. Like, oh, I do Mm. belong here. I am normal. This is okay to feel this way. Like I'm not alone in that. All of those moments feel so big. And I think because Mm. there's so, like we talk about inner child healing and shit. I'm like, when it comes to compet, these are messages and like expectations Mm. of being straight that we've gotten since birth and probably Mm -hmm. even like before birth but I mean yeah before birth but (laughs) it's like there's just so much to unpack and so many little moments where Mm. like you real like I realize oh I was crossing my own boundaries and letting go of aspects of myself that are really important to me and I didn't even know that at the time Mm. and then to kind of be my grown-up this version of myself and meet people who are like oh my god I felt that too it's just so healing and cathartic and like fun as well Mm. yeah Mm. before because I want to get like the I don't know the TikTok version or like the bullet point version of both of y'all's journeys. Cause I think we could do whole episodes on sort of like this re coming <laughs> out story. Um, I want to ask what does fuck cop head support club do? And w- if people listening to this are like, Oh my God, I love witchy stuff. I love inner child work. I'm coming back out or I'm rediscovering myself. Like what can they expect before we kind of get into the more of the inner workings of how it was built? Yeah. <laughs> you go ahead, Eva. <laughs> yeah. <Jinx. laughs> um, well, yeah, it really is like a, a, it's a beautiful community space to connect with people who, like you said, have either re-come out or are like rediscovering something about themselves. Either Even people who have like come out 10 plus years before, but have felt a disconnect from the community and want to re-enter the community as who they are mm-hmm. now. Um but yeah, we have a Discord with lots of different like channels that are for different identities to talk about like queer media, talk about compet realizations. We have one for different like gender exploring and like questioning and queer and trans people. Um, and then we have our monthly calls, which are really like an opportunity to talk to people who have similar experience, to like give that time to reflect and process and journal mm. and also have a dance party because that's who we are <laughs> don't i know it don't i motherfucking know it <laughs> <laughs> always always the dance parties we've also done a few yeah. like in-person meetups as well since we are based mm-hmm. in toronto but it is very cool like you said kelsey so many of these experiences and messages of compat are universal and like we have members from all over the world which is so cool there's even a channel in the discord that's like queer travel meetups and people kind of ah. share like oh i'm gonna be in new york who's there let's meet up and that's been really really beautiful to see that is amazing i can only imagine how great that must come in handy because for traveling we really don't know we we can't we can't find those little special hidden gemmed queer places like you really do sometimes need a local to like point it out right like 
West Hollywood's a little different. It's literally a mm-hmm. rainbow road in the middle of it. <laughs> like, you don't have a hard time finding it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even in Toronto, I was like, oh, wow, they you guys have, like, your own little version of this with your little rainbow, like, street. And it's often just a street in these big major cities. So it's really nice. I can only imagine how nice mm-hmm. it must be for people to connect to be like, okay, it isn't just this, like, one rainbow uh, square block like there are places that feel queer friendly or maybe even that don't or like here to avoid this part of town because on vacation or traveling I feel like that's so imperative and people feel more free to to like express themselves mm-hmm. on vacation because there's no the stakes are very low and no one knows you which I love mm-hmm. um, so I want to know yeah. um, let's like talk about your journeys into this realization right because Marley I feel like for some people who remembered you from the first time you come on came on i think we had just we were talking about bisexuality there or even just opening into your own sexuality and then like i remember once we were catching up just off thread like facetiming and you're like yeah so i'm dating this girl now and i was like yes okay bye queen you're like actually i'm a lesbian (laughs) and i was like oh shit what and i was like oh you're an f what i call an fbl which is a full-blown lesbian which is like my friends i'm like they're in the fbl category they're in like the spectrum category like she is out proud fbl like tell us like what tell us the story and then maybe what was like the hardest part about this, this like journey for you so far oh my gosh yeah I remember that conversation and I'm like it's so funny that it probably sounded quite casual to you to be like I'm a lesbian now but like I remember being like oh my god this is such a big deal I'm scared like it was still so big at the time yeah um Mm. but yeah what a what a freaking journey I mean definitely compat learning about compat was the biggest light bulb in the world because it was the kind of thing where I just never ever even considered questioning attraction to men I was like, this is inevitable. I am a girl. I therefore am, must love men. Like there was just never even a moment where I was like, is that true for me? So mm. when I first came out as bi, um, I first, I first became aware, like looking back, there's so many gay signs throughout my whole life, but like <laughs> they were a little too subconscious kind of thing, dealing with some other stuff as we do. Um, but I first like consciously realized attraction to women kind of right after the sexual trauma that I shared about on our last episode, um, together. And so that was really confusing. And I was very deep in this kind of thing of like, is this just a trauma response? Like, Mm. is this just because I'm scared of men right now? Like, is this even valid? And also I don't have this boons to like deal with this right now like I'm just trying to get through this trauma time so that was very confusing I remember actively being like I'm gonna think about this later like I'm gonna revisit (laughs) this later and then a few years later I think I just made a friend who was like I opened up to her about that stuff and she was like, you know, like, it's okay to be bi. And she was like, I'm bi. And I was like, Ooh, like, Oh my gosh. And that did a lot for me and just allowed me to be like, okay, like I, I am attracted to women, never question men, I guess I'm bi. Um, which was like a step Mm -hmm. towards liberation or my most authentic self. But then it wasn't until like the pandemic, um, where another friend actually was like, she had identified as bi and then she was questioning if she was lesbian and she told me about that and when she said that it was like huge light bulb in my brain i'm just like holy shit Mm -hmm. like that's allowed like you can be (laughs) lesbian like it was just so out of my um scope like no one around me was identifying as lesbian this kind of thing um Mm also a really mm. big piece of that is like femme identity because mm. for my whole life when I thought of lesbian representation I'd think of like butch people and I'd mm-hmm. be like well that's not me so therefore mm-hmm. I'm probably mm-hmm. not that mm-hmm. but then like starting to see femme rap I was like oh you can be lesbian and myself I can be lesbian and myself it was like oh yeah. holy shit um, so that was a big life bu- light bulb moment. And then I found the, like, am I lesbian master doc? And there was one specific line that said, um, it's a little like hetero monog. It's from the eighties, whatever, but it was like, or not hetero, but like monog. And it was like, imagine yourself, um, with a man for your life. Like n- don't, not just sex, but picture spending your life with a man and like being in love, living together, whatever. 
Um, how does that feel? And I felt like I was literally suffocating. And then it was like, now picture a woman. And I was like, that's so fun and beautiful. <laughs> um, and so then I was just like, okay, you're probably gay. And then literally I watched the cheesiest musical ever, Prom the Musical, which came out on the day of my birthday, which feels like a gay sign from the yeah. universe. <laughs> and I watched it with my mom while I was quarantining. And at the end she was like, it's about two women in high school end up being gay, falling in love, all that stuff. Um, at the end she was like, that was cute. And I was like, hyperventilating and crying. Like I was like bawling and she was like, Oh, what's going on right now? Aww, then, you're sweet so mom. at that point I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think it was like a few weeks and a lot of resources later that I was mm. like, okay, I am ready to like embrace this. But it was so much like therapy and unpacking and even mm. just being like, like taking the word lesbian and like shaking it free from all the shame and weirdness mm. that I had associated mm. with it. Like I couldn't even write it in my journal. Mm. I could, I would write like, I would just write L like the L word. I would just write <laughs> L. <laughs> I couldn't even write it. And oh, then, and then wow. now I'm like, Oh my God, I'm such a lesbian and I'm so oh. proud. But like, yeah, big, big journey is for sure. Oh, I'm, I'm shocked that we left out the last part of, and then you found the love of your life, uh, your lesbian, yeah. Brittany. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that, like I said, that would require its own whole It would just keep like, going. Yeah. That would be a series. So love you, Brett. <laughs> we'll get to your own series. Uh, Eva, I would yeah. love to shift to your story because, and like, thank you, Marley, for sharing. I'm like over here, snap, snap, snapping my, my fingers off. Um, Eva, I've only seen... Mm -hmm you as out and you know that's when I met you and then when I've watched your content and like watching your journey a I was like holy shit like wow what a transformation really like an evolution uh I'm, I'm sure you hear that all the fucking time um but also I no, feel I like that. you I it was like just based on your content it was like a switch that was like kind of switching and then you shot out of a fucking rainbow cannonball and now you are this like <laughs> literal leader maybe that's where i got leader earlier it's like you are this leader like sex education sex science like you have embraced this shit to be not only like such an ident like your true identity but then to to uh be a conduit for other people in education i was just like Holy shit, this, this, like, talk about a coin flip. Like, to walk me through your journey. How did we get here? Oh my gosh. Ah, okay, <laughs> after hearing Marley's story and then for you to say all those things, Kelsey, <laughs> I have literal Aww. goosebumps. I'm like, it's so beautiful. Oh, ah, yeah. Oh my gosh. No, so I feel like, in terms of, de yeah, it definitely was like a gradual moment for me like, like I like Marley so many gay signs growing up I founded my high school <laughs> <gay storyline. laughs> um, yes I remember you telling me that when we first met yeah. I was like oh so the you know quote unquote the straight girl <laughs> so you, you've been gay forever founded your gay straight alliance Got no it. I was I was just so head strong too i was like i'm gonna do this thing we're gonna put gay posters around the school gonna go to all yeah yeah but yeah i was so straight so in the closet never question it and it wasn't until i <laughs> um i started started sexting a girl that i met via yes. sex blog on twitter and then she fl she flew to toronto from finland for a sex research <laughs> We oh booked an Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cue me the night before on like the LGBTQ like hotline for youths. Still thinking I'm straight, but being like, I think so. I think oh something's going on. My gay. That's all I can say is, oh my gay. I'm telling you, your your story is like yeah, shaking up a fucking confetti bomb and then like waiting for it to explode. Gay. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, no, even we went to the Airbnb, first person ever to give me an orgasm. I was still like, I am heterosexual. Um, and it took until the last, <laughs> I know it's very, it took until the last day of the conference and the last keynote. And I realized that she was going to be 
be flying home to Finland and I wasn't going to be able to see her again. And I got this like pit in my stomach and I was like, I think I have romantic feelings towards this girl and I can no longer deny that I am Aww. not straight. <laughs> and I, I went home and my mom and my sister were just sitting on the sitting at the table and my mom's like, did anything interesting happen to, at the conference this weekend? And I said, yeah, there's this, this girl. And that's Aww, how I came and how, Were they receptive? <laughs> um, my sister was there. My sister was great. My mom has gotten better. I've been on a journey. But yeah, it was very much like from that moment, I was like, okay, I know there, there's this one girl. But similar to Marley, it was like, I'm going to leave my attraction to men unquestioned and kind of as I went along it once I came out as bi surprisingly my interest in dating men I just didn't, I didn't <laughs> feel <laughs> compelled to do that they didn't feel like any men around and, and, and you know for a couple years it went on like maybe there'll be a, mm -hmm. a man and yeah then over the pandemic, quarantine happened. So much like TikTok content, like I think similar to Marley too, like really mm -hmm. normalizing the idea, the mm -hmm. lesbian identity and that what it means to be a, a lesbian, that lesbians like aside from what the media shows are so hot and cool and lovable and diverse and, and like, yeah. And I think also, so going on like a journey around my gender and realizing that I'm not binary. Um, yeah, I just eventually started to tell my lesbian friends, like, can you, I'm going to share some lesbian <laughs> memes. I'm going to use the label lesbian to identify myself. But yeah, it eventually got to a point where I was like, I think I can be okay with if there is ever a man that I ever want to date that comes along mm. we'll get there when it gets there but i don't need to hold out hope for this hypothetical person when i know that like the attraction and the romantic feelings that i have towards women and non-binary people mm. and that connection mm. and those experiences are so different and special and beautiful and like it's okay and I die. My face hurts already from smiling too much. So I'm going to try and frown because otherwise I'm going to have the biggest pain flare at how much joy this conversation brings me. Um, I, yeah, right. You bring up such a, uh, an interesting point. I want to touch on if you're okay with it about how do you feel your gender expression mm -hmm. ties into your sexual identity? Because, you know, again, for the old fogies who might be listening, who are trying their best to learn, who say, well, a lesbian is a girl that likes other girls, right? Or like, you know, or do our, le <laughs> is the lesbian community accepting mm -hmm. of non-binary folks? Like, I have to imagine it's a, a mixed bag. I mean, can, can either of you kind of speak to your experiences with it? I know, Eva, you identify as non-binary and Marley, you are in a relationship. Uh, with a non-binary person, so maybe you both can kind of touch on how those experiences are. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Ooh, confidants, y'all know life can be overwhelming. Gosh, for me, there is some stuff happening up in the stars. There are things happening down here in the planets. For me, in my relationship, oh, I'm getting that feeling of detached, that anxiety, that sadness. But thank God, I have BetterHelp. I love my new therapist, Michelle. She completely understands my style of communication while also teaching me new stuff about my attachment theory. Who would have known I'm an anxious attachment style, conscious uncoupling. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than that in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And confidants get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash CI. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash CI. Back to the show. A language to, to, to describe people today. But yeah, people, um, yeah, if folks want to learn more about that, uh, I love Gender Outlaws by... Um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting. It the always name right happens now. when it's live. Ah. It's like I can talk about <laughs> authors and books all day. The second you put a camera on me, I'm like, the what is names? <laughs> <laughs> 
I can look it up. Gender outlaw. Exactly. Kate Bornstein. <laughs> Kate Bornstein. Thank God for internets. <laughs> yeah. And then also, yeah, Stone Butch Blues by mm. Leslie Feinberg. Um, also, like, a trans, non-binary lesbian. Because it's, yeah, and, like, that gender non-conformity and that journey was very connected to me, like, as, I think, both in tandem. As I was conceptualizing myself as a lesbian and thinking about my life as something that would not necessarily revolve around men, I also thought about, like, how does my, mm. how can my identity mm. look if I don't mm. center men in that and like cutting my hair and surrounding myself by queer community and like other non-binary people I was like there was this like such mm. freedom in that so yeah in that way the the, the journeys and the discovery and the identity are very yeah. it's so funny with like the hair with like a queer just identity because when I chopped all my hair off people were like <laughs> are you non-binary now I was like well I I wasn't going, no, but I that, I get why you all believe that, just because I chopped all my hair off, but then that inner ties with cis mm-hmm. which is why we're here. Or not cis <laughs> compet. I'm going to mix that up the whole fucking time. Anyway, Marley, <laughs> let's talk about it. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, on a similar <laughs> note to what you just raised with, like, the hair, I think something that was really huge for me and is still really, like, liberating and just a huge learning for me was, like, separating gender from expressions of masculinity femininity and like the interplay of those those energies because i think that Mm. i did used to be i'm sure i'm still problematic in many ways that i'll continue to learn but (laughs) i think i did used to be a lot more problematic where i was like i was like accepting of transgender non-binary people but it also was a little bit like but i am really proud of like um being a woman, like I was just kind of confused about like womanhood and like proudness around that. Yeah, and, and that's, yeah. that's all amazing. You know, we can like celebrate womanhood for people who identify as women and stuff. But I also didn't realize that like femininity as a thing available to anyone, regardless of gender was so, and is so precious to me. And like mm. being femme is probably one of my most like Mm -hmm. sacred identities at this point like it's so it's something I'm so proud of and something that's really cool for me is like when I removed the male gaze and as I continue to do that I actually get more and more femme like I'm feeling like I like spoke to a law school yesterday at speaking on their campus and I was like I feel so outwards I was like wearing (laughs) pink and I like had my pink eyeshadow on my sparkles (laughs) and I was like this is so fun And um, it's been so cool because I think there's so many ideas that – this is a bit of a tangent, but there's so many ideas and, like, like, things that really feed into rape culture that say that, like, femininity only exists to please a man. And there's something that feels so badass and radical and, like, (laughs) about being both lesbian and femme because I'm like, I really don't care what men think. I'm, like, genuinely just doing this for me. And I think that that has allowed me to not only accept myself a lot more, but to be way more like to my core, Mm. accepting and just like so deeply happy for any gender expression. Mm. And I see like Eva and I see like my partner, Britt, and I'm just like, y'all are like non-binary as fuck. Like there's no, if someone tried to be like, no, that you must be a girl or a boy. I would like literally stand up and fight them because I'm just like, (laughs) but you're not like y'all radiate non-binary vibes. And I think that my own accept, my own realization that like I'm femme and embracing femininity and separating that from like woman or man that society's given us was just like such a huge liberating light bulb. Mm, gosh I, again like snaps to the highest umpteenth degree because you're just touching on so much too of mm-hmm. uh i guess like why i love the idea of this being called a support club is because it is a recovery from the way we've been brought up it's so much unlearning and you know even with this podcast there are there have been times where things have happened or conversations around certain topics where i've been like Ooh, did I sound too um, judgmental or um, what's the opposite of woke? Um, <laughs> like it's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Bigoted>. Exactly. <laughs> or like, you know, sexist, racist, like transphobic, homophobic. Like, was there ever conversation that yeah. has hit these airwaves mm-hmm. where I've fucked up or said something? And that 
felt like, you know, at times I would look at my stats and I would see how many like women I had or how many people that were white that listened or like from what countries. And I was just like, are we just echo chambering each other's fears rather than growth? But I think there is a, a need to be held in a space that you feel like you can say, Hey, I feel like this is going to be a problematic question or a problematic opinion. I'm unlearning, but I, I don't know who the fuck I'm supposed to talk to about this because I can read and listen to things for days. But if I can't be a human doing instead of a human being, then how do I grow? So do you guys feel like you've created, how have you created a safe container for people to show up and be like, I'm discovering. And with discovering is coming a lot of fuckery and problematic shit. (laughs) Um, Okay. I feel like Mm -hmm. this space we've created is the most, um, like we all sitting in a circle versus teacher and class kind of separation. Like Mm -hmm. it does not feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like everyone's mm-hmm. just so aware that we're like sharing wisdom and mm-hmm. learning and also just hanging out, like just hanging out with each other. And that's one of my favorite things about it is like, there's such a, um, there's so much sharing of like resources and storytelling and experiences. And I think that the, um, like shout out to whoever in the world created discord. Cause I'm like, yeah. I really like the nature of it because in our Zoom calls, it's like we're all in one space. In certain channels, we're all in one space and we're really connecting on what we do share. And mm-hmm. as like, I love that meme that's like, I'm going to call LGBTQIA community algibity. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> as the algibity community, um, we do share so much experience and unpack and compete. But then there's so many intersections within that, whether it's mm-hmm. like, trans identity, being non-binary, mm. being femme, being mask, being mm. questioning, being asexual. Like there's just mm. so many identities and experiences that weave into that. So I'm like, I feel like it's such a beautiful kind of humble environment where similar to your whole pod, Kelsey, like we're like, we're confident that we don't know everything. Like there's that really clear, um, really beautiful honoring of like the Mm. wisdom that every single person brings because of lived experience Mm. and a really gorgeous like that to me is such a kind of fuck you in a fun way to patriarchy because it's like nobody's like in order to talk about this you need to have a degree and Mm. be certified and whatever it's just like no like you're living this like that is thank you so much for sharing that kind of thing Mm. so I think it's really beautiful in that way I also think one of my favorite things about the space is that it's really whole Like, I feel like we've had moments where we're laughing and sharing memes and sharing astrology (laughs) shit and, like, talking about we have a um, slutty stories thread. So people will be sharing, like, fun stuff like that as well. Um, And then people are also getting really vulnerable about, Mm. like, coming out when they're in a marriage to a man after Mm. years and, like, navigate, like, just, like, really complex, hard things or navigating, like serious homophobia in their families or communities like there's just really a lot of depth amongst a lot of like fun and play and I think that that is really essential in life and I definitely feel it in the in the club as well Mm -hmm. Eva do you want to add anything to that Mm -hmm. yeah no I think the only thing I can think to add is that like yeah I really feel feel that folks within the club approach stuff with such love and kindness. Like when folks do share things in the club where it's like, I'm realizing I have this behavior pattern from cis heteronormativity, from combat. It's it's not serving other Mm. people. It's not serving me. I feel stuck. I feel like the response is like, whether or not we have the answer, TM, we can we see Mm. you we love you like we're here to support Mm. you like on the journey um yeah that feels feels like like it's like it's one of those things where you say like oh i wish i had had this at x (laughs) point in my life or y point in my life and so it it really is exciting to know that this exists and is something we can share and encourage people to join because 
again, I wish I had this 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, I'm curious. So for people who are obviously listening to this going like, fuck yes, I want to be a part of this club. Tell me all about it. How, what does it take to be a member? And then maybe we could talk about too, like if someone isn't able to join right at this moment, what are some things that we could do to kind of dive deeper into our own um, issues with uh, Compet? So let's start with how does a membership to this gorgeous club work? Mm -hmm. um, so we've tried to make it as accessible as possible. It's $10 a month, which feels like really great. Um, and people can basically join through Patreon. So if you go to, it's kind of a long link. We can like give you it for the show notes. <laughs> yeah. um, Eva, I feel like you might be better at like spelling it out than me. I feel like I like always fuck it up, but it's definitely also in Eva and I's Instagram link in bio. That might be easy. But yeah, yeah, Eva, if you want to like say the link, that might be good. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Okay. Maybe, I'm like, maybe we yeah, should change true. the link. That's smart. Um, But the link is patreon.com slash <laughs> fuck compet support club but without the u so it's f c k and then and compet c o m p h e t okay that's not that yeah, bad the support, support club still has the u right we, we got all the u's except for the fuck you okay got it got it got it got it got it, got it. that's not that hard but yeah we'll, we'll definitely put that in the show notes 100 percent. so it's ten dollars yeah. a month and what does that include um, that includes the ongoing Discord, so people are all up in that like 24-7, and then we have monthly guided Zoom calls. Um, we also just like are kind of working with the members right now to see like what do people want more of, and you know, we might add in some really exciting things in the future like book clubs, more in yes. which sounds really exciting. Also, I want to say that like Eva and I have both been sharing about our lesbian coming out journeys but this is not a club just for lesbians um yeah eva if you want to expand more on that <laughs> i also feel like you're <laughs> i'm like eva good at words <laughs> eva good word <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> no i feel like that's a really important thing to say because i feel like a lot of people who maybe know the term compat mm. think of compat and lesbian but it really is like about like like you said Kelsey like like the cis hetero world that we live in and like, like unlearning and uncentering like cis heteronormativity so there are a lot of bi people in the club um and pan people queer people um there's a lot of like non-binary and trans people who are unlearning like cis normativity around that I saw, this just came, um, oh sorry yeah. I was gonna say I'm just yeah. curious are there any gay people like gay men in there because I feel like they also have their own club. Like, the whole queer community feels like their club. <laughs> it's kind of like everyone, <laughs> and like, it, everyone except cis gay men. But, yeah. All the LGBTs except cis gay men. Um, and that includes, like, questioning people as well. Mm. So people who are in that process, I think that's a really important one to say because mm -hmm. I know that like when I was deep in questioning I was like well I don't want to take up space in this community yeah. <laughs> where people are like legit gay like <laughs> that kind of thing legit gay, <laughs> and we actually made a post on that together recently about like kind of those internal barriers and like queer imposter syndrome experiences so even if you're a questioning person and you're just like tossing and turning at night being like I don't know if I am but I think I am but I don't know like this mm -hmm. is also a space for you Mm, gorgeous. And I guess um, as mm -hmm. we like wind down, which I'm so sad, I don't want to wind down. I want to stay on a call with you guys forever, <laughs> um, which is like why I think I need to join the Discord because then I can be online with yes. you guys forever. Um, what are some ways maybe if someone can't right now with the energy exchange financially uh, be there, how can we just like hear this podcast and go like, oh, I like these themes. I like what these ladies are talking about. What can I start to do myself to just, again, kind of start to scratch that itch? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, every time I was like, follow yeah. us on Instagram. But I also want to no, think of, like, that is an things thing. that you can, like, <laughs> we do, I mean, do talk a lot about. Yeah. <laughs> We do talk a lot about... I was thinking that, too, because I'm like, we. I do <laughs> no, know that we both 
do a lot of resource sharing through our platforms. So it's Mm -hmm. kind of like there is a collection there of like spaces to check out, authors to Mm -hmm. check out. Um, I think a huge, an, an amazing, amazing thing about like living in this moment. And even I have kind of been co-reading this really cool book that's on like lesbian history. And it is so mm. well, like, it makes me so freaking grateful to be born mm. when I was and where I was. Cause yeah. I'm just like, holy shit. Like you could not, you just could not be like out and gay and proud and celebrate. Like it, you just could not. So, wow. and I know a lot of people still can't, but yeah. like, times are definitely changing and have changed a lot. Um, so I'm really grateful for like all the resources that exist in the world. And I've been, I've benefited a lot from lesbian, uh, sapphic teen fiction books. That's been really (laughs) huge for me as a resource, because I do think that like, this feels really important to me. Like, I think that often with any marginalized community, whether it's like queerness for me, like navigating life as a Jewish person, like Mm -hmm. any marginalized identity. I think when we constantly hear about the trauma, which is important to acknowledge, like all these traumas occur and the oppression, um, it makes it really hard for us to be like, woohoo, I'm going to fully embrace that identity. Even though it's important to learn about, I think that like joy is such an important motivator. And so for me, like Mm -hmm on TikTok, honestly, mm-hmm. like just be on TikTok, like seeing so much queer love being yeah. celebrated, even just queer people hanging out, having a good time mm-hmm. with their friends. I was like, wow, like this joy gets to be a part of it too. So I'd say just like seek out media where you find queer joy um, mm-hmm. is represented and like watch it, enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Eva, did you have anything to add? I want to give recommendations now. <laughs> I I love that. I have a gay library. Marley knows my gay, gay yeah. library has two gay libraries. <laughs> if you come to my house, I will give you a gay book. But <laughs> but it's <laughs> but I think that's so real. Like yeah, uh, the like mm-hmm. storytelling aspect and like the power of fiction to like read through the story, mm-hmm. especially stories of people talking about being questioning and like figuring mm-hmm. stuff out and can be really powerful i'm thinking of cool for the summer which is a book that maybe i don't hear recommended very often um but it is a book about like a bisexual lead character like realizing that she Ooh, is a attract- i love that because i immediately women, thought about our nine very so, non-binary queen demi lovato <laughs> school for the summer which when same. she released that when they released that it was when they were still identifying as bisexual. I'm like, okay, see, we're all dipping our toes into the water. Let's go. We all, I'm seeing a theme here. I'm seeing a theme here. Um, And then I would love for both of you to brag just about what you're doing also individually and what like kind of classes you have set up and and resources you can share. So uh, Marley, let's start with you. Where, what are you, what are you getting into? What can the people expect from you and where can they find you? Well, one very exciting thing is the, project on the horizon with Kelsey of like the documentary and that was such a special experience (laughs) and I can't wait to like share that with the world um but that (laughs) dives it can I I mean yeah I can say yeah it's not spoiler alert (laughs) no we've posted it all over (laughs) um yeah like that dives into my story of restorative (laughs) justice for sexual violence and how I fought for my personal sexual assault case to end with that so that in short means that my assailant went to therapy for like months and then we eventually met in a really transformational circle instead of proceeding with criminal trials so that was like such a life-changing experience and so much impact has come out of that and something that's been a huge focus for me right now is like speaking more and more on campuses and conferences which feels very exciting and vision board vibes to me so that is like a really big thing at the forefront I also do a lot of work with somatic sex education and somatic coaching. So if people are um, healing from sexual trauma, uh, doing a lot of unlearning around like body image, I also have a background in eating disorder prevention. Um, So I do a lot of coaching work around like 
reclaiming self-love on not just a logical level because i think a lot of us are like i know i'm supposed to be nice to myself and love myself but it's like we want to actually feel that on an embodied level where that mm-hmm. expresses itself in the way that we breathe and in mm-hmm. our posture and in the way that we like move through the world so that's a lot of the work i do is like putting it into our bodies some of my programs and stuff are transitioning right now but mm-hmm. if people just follow me on instagram at marley list i'm a r L-E-E-L-I-S-S. Uh, they can stay up to date there, and I'll be sharing some exciting announcements soon. You won't miss it. And sign up for your newsletter and all that stuff, too, because you give great, great stuff. And Eva, Eva, where can people find you, and what are you up to? <laughs> yeah, so I run a course called Fuck the Patriarchy, Fuck Yourself. <laughs> Um, which yeah. is a, <laughs> you have more to work. that's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> thank you. It's a, yeah, it's a 14 week course. That's very much like rooted in science because that's my background, like a master's of science did a degree or whatever, <laughs> uh, dissertation on sex thing. That's the vibe. Um, but yeah, really giving people tools and then also, um, a really supportive, like, like queer I would say like forward community to work on unlearning a lot of sexual shame and really deciding and figuring and exploring like what are your authentic desires? Like what does your sex life and and sexuality mean to you outside of the patriarchy and compet and all this bullshit? Um, So yeah, I'm currently working on some stuff around that. I think the next cohort might be in January, but I'm looking at doing a master's Oh class. my god, yes! Oh, is this going to be an exclusive for the, for the pod? <laughs> um, I'm hoping to do um, a master class in the fall that's around sex ed for late bloomers. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, you two together so, as friends yes. and like business partners too, it's like you get the science aspect you get the embodiment aspect together you get like the support like you're touching all like spirituality the fucking astrology like i don't see a bad thing in this mix of friendship so you guys eva and marley thank you so so much for coming here and sharing and being just such a great gay lesbian bright light in this world that we so desperately needed and i love you both um so thanks for being here Aw, thanks, Kelsey. I love you both. Thanks for having us. <laughs> All right, Coffee Dots, if you love this, which I know you did, make sure you Yay. give it a five stars in the iTunes rating. That really helps us get seen. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube.com slash Kelsey Dara. And all of the links that we've mentioned here will be in the show notes below. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.